Does marijuana treat multiple sclerosis? Today I'm going to review the scientific evidence for marijuana and the oral extract of marijuana, Nabiximols or Sativex, and talk about my own experiences as well. Citations below if you want to take a look. There's a lot of hype and misinformation out there, but remember what the Buddha said, focus the mind on the present moment. Let's have some fun. Many people with MS use marijuana. According to this Narcan survey, 26% of people with MS have used it to treat their symptoms and 20% have spoken to their doctor, which I would recommend by the way. 16% are currently using it and 91% think marijuana should be legal in some form. And by the way, I practice in California of the United States where marijuana is legal both recreationally and medically, although I am not able to prescribe it due to federal regulations. By the way, my name is Brandon Bieber and I make videos about MS every Wednesday, so please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications. And if you enjoyed the video, please click like. Now, the same Narcan survey asked people with MS how common these symptoms were and whether or not they thought marijuana was effective. And so they divided it between men and women. You can see the females are in the pink and purple color, the men between the beige and brown color, and there really wasn't a big difference between men and women. And then the dark bars are the percentage of people who reported that symptom, and the light bars are the percentage of people who felt it was effective. So it looks like marijuana was most successful in treating muscle spasms, cramps, and spasticity, increased tone in the muscles. And of course, this is well known, and it provides a nice alternative to traditional pharmaceuticals for spasticity, such as baclofen, tizanidine, cyclobenzaprine, because those medications are often sedating and poorly tolerated and can even cause falls and confusion in the elderly and people with multiple other medical comorbidities. So it's a nice alternative. Marijuana also seemed to be somewhat effective in pain and numbness, though it wasn't very effective, maybe only around 30% effective, at least by report, in bladder symptoms and anxiety, and it was sort of intermediately effective in insomnia, migraines and other headaches, tremors, and in gastrointestinal issues or nausea. And of course, marijuana is well known to be a treatment of nausea with chemotherapy. Now, no one knows exactly how marijuana might benefit people with multiple sclerosis, but there are multiple theoretical mechanisms of actions. So in humans, cannabinoids bind the CB1 and CB2 receptors. CB1 receptors are expressed in the brain and other parts of the nervous system and mediate the release of neurotransmitters such as glutamate and GABA. And GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. And the CB1 receptor is responsible for the psychoactive effects, in other words, getting you high. However, the CB2 receptor is expressed in the immune cells, such as monocytes, macrophages, B cells, microglia, T cells, and mediates cytokine release. Cytokines are proteins involved in immune cell signaling. And so CB2 is not involved in the central nervous system effects. Now there are many different cannabinoids, but two of them that are prevalent in marijuana are THC, tetrahydrocannabidiol, and CBD, cannabidiol. And you can see their chemical structures are similar, but they have very different effects. So THC binds to cannabinoid receptors, CB2, CB1 and CB2 very firmly and has a lot of psychoactive effects. Whereas CBD has low affinity for these receptors, especially for CB1, and hence has no significant psychoactive effects, but may still have other beneficial effects. And CBD is a very attractive compound because most people don't want the psychoactive effects because they may have MS symptoms on a daily basis and it's not practical to be high all the time and you can't exactly go to work high. And there is some evidence that CBD has significant effects on multiple sclerosis, at least in preclinical studies. For instance, it protects oligodendrocyte precursor cells, which are the cells that can potentially regrow myelin or remyelinate, from inflammation-induced apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. Also, in a mouse model of MS, experimental autoimmune encephalomyelitis, cannabidiol decreases activation of pro-inflammatory T cells. So that being said, there isn't a lot of direct clinical evidence of CBD in MS. Some people report that it's anecdotally useful, especially in symptoms such as spasticity. Hopefully we'll get better evidence later on. Now you may ask, can I just smoke marijuana for my MS symptoms? And there is some evidence of this. This is a randomized trial of smoking marijuana 
marijuana for multiple sclerosis spasticity with 30 participants, and they measured spasticity with the modified Ashworth scale, and they showed a decrease in spasticity by 2.74 points on this scale, which was huge and highly statistically significant. They used a crossover design where half the people got the treatment and half the people got placebo, and then they switched places or crossed over. And you can see those who got the treatment, they got better, the treatment wore off, they got worse, got better, got worse, and then when they crossed over, the opposite happened, whereas the placebo groups were relatively stable, and they averaged all this together, and you can see the placebo does nothing, but there's a big difference between placebo and treatment. So it does work, although it has a very temporary effect. And that's why a lot of pharmaceutical companies have developed oral extracts to be more slowly absorbed, have a more prolonged effect, and hopefully cause less side effects. And a lot of the research on multiple sclerosis relates to this product, Sativex, or Nabiximols. And I'm not trying to endorse a specific product. I have no financial conflict of interest. It's just that a lot of the research is done on Nabiximols. And this is approved in Europe by the EMA. It's not FDA approved and not currently available in the United States. It's actually an oral or buccal spray inside of the cheek. And each spray delivers an approximately equal amount of THC and CBD, 2.7 milligrams of THC and 2.5 milligrams of CBD. And as I said, it's much more slowly absorbed than smoking marijuana and has much less psychoactive effects. Now, marijuana can cause significant side effects in some people. Generally speaking, people don't overdose and die from marijuana because there's a low concentration of CB1 receptors in the medulla that controls breathing. In fact, the lethal dose of marijuana from animal studies is estimated to be about 4 grams, which is the equivalent of smoking 1,500 pounds of marijuana in 15 minutes, or $2 million worth of marijuana. But there are many reported deaths from marijuana from car accidents and other accidents, particularly with highly concentrated products such as hash oil and wax. So caveat emptor. And there are many other milder side effects such as headaches in around 5%, nausea in 4.4%, which is a little counterintuitive because marijuana can treat nausea. But sometimes people get a very severe cyclic vomiting syndrome, which only goes away if you stop marijuana. It can also cause sleepiness, dizziness, cough, and in a small number of people, amnesia, memory loss, and in some cases, psychiatric side effects such as paranoia. And there's a little bit of a debate about whether or not marijuana could contribute to certain types of psychiatric illnesses in rare cases. But let's move on to the benefits of Sativex as seen in clinical trials. And as I said, Sativex is EMA approved to treat spasticity in multiple sclerosis. And this is a 12-week placebo-controlled, double-blind, randomized withdrawal studies in responders. So what they did is they gave Sativex to 572 people, and 241, or 42%, said they got better. They were randomized to either continue Sativex or change to placebo, and they didn't know which one. The people who continued Sativex, they continued to get better, improving on their numerical rating scale for spasticity. But those who changed to placebo got worse. And you can see there's a large standard error with a lot of individual variation. But on the average, they got better by a statistically significant amount. You can see the p-value here. Also, in the same study, there was a statistically significant benefit for fewer sleep disturbances in people who were taking Sativex. And to look at it in a different way, they did a long-term 50-week study using a global impression of change scale, which is where you just ask, did you get better, stay the same, or get worse overall? And they asked both the patient, the person taking Sativex, the physician, and the caregiver, such as the spouse. And no matter who you ask, you can see in the red bar, about 70% of people taking Sativex said they got better versus only 40% taking placebo. So a pretty significant difference. And Sativex probably works a little bit for pain too. This is another randomized trial. And you can see in the solid line, those treated with Sativex had less pain on the numerical rating scale than those in the dotted line treated with placebo, although it's a modest difference. For bladder symptoms, it's less clear. There really isn't great evidence. This is a randomized trial looking at cannabis extract versus THC versus placebo. And you can see that 44% said they 
improve with cannabis extract versus 40% with THC versus 33% with placebo, but this was not statistically significant. And I would say this data is consistent with my own experience. Now, I don't have any patients taking Sativex because it's not available here, but many of my patients use CBD oil or other marijuana products. There's nothing special about Sativex. It's probably fairly easy to get some form of marijuana extract, even if it's not a pharmaceutical formulation. And many of my patients think it's helpful for spasticity or muscle cramps or muscle pain. A lot of people prefer CBD oil because they don't like the side effects of THC. And these marijuana products aren't necessarily better than pharmaceuticals such as baclofen, but some people find them to be less sedating. And in terms of pain, most of my patients haven't had great results, maybe a modest, if any, benefit. And I haven't really heard of much benefit in terms of bladder, tremor, or other symptoms. I also want to make a quick note for young women that animal studies have indicated that cannabinoids may have detrimental effects on fetal development. So Sativex, and of course, any product with marijuana, is not recommended in pregnant women or women planning to become pregnant. Also, considerable levels of cannabinoids were found in maternal breast milk, and so these products are not recommended during breastfeeding either. And I should also mention that this research is all about symptomatic treatment. Even though cannabinoids have known effects on the immune system, it's unknown if these products could treat the underlying disease. In other words, prevent relapses or disability progression or brain atrophy. Right now, these are just proven symptomatic treatments, but not disease modifying therapies. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video and it was useful. And please share your own experiences in the comments below. Have you used marijuana products, either smoked marijuana or Sativex or other marijuana derivatives, especially CBD oil? And what are your results? Did it help your symptoms? And do you have any recommendations for future video topics.